Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed and grateful to God for this opportunity to bring forth His word to you. Praise God. I enjoy this time. Seriously speaking, I enjoy it because it affords me the opportunity to receive the word of God and the mind of God. And you know, he that waters shall be watered also. Praise <laughs> God. You, you, you cannot be a container that go filled with something and then don't experience part of that thing also. So I take advantage of these moments. I learn, I grow, I, I, I have my own questions, even from the things I teach you. Yes, and I go back to the Lord. I say, Lord, you said, I say, imagine, yeah, it happens. You know, I, I, there are times, you know, a word just comes to my spirit. I don't really understand, but I believe the one who's giving me the word is true. And so I speak it, but then I go back afterwards and I say, Lord, that thing you said, what, where did it come from? You know, I don't mean where did it come from, like as in, give me the breakdown of it. And then he begins to teach me on my own. Then I get a better understanding, praise God. Hey, glory to God. It's a new week, so a lot of things. And we've been on the spirit of boldness. The spirit of boldness. Because the Lord said this month, He is infusing boldness into our being. Are you ready to make demand for your daily bread? With boldness in your heart. Demand these things because they are yours. Say with me, Father, I demand right now my daily bread it is coming to me in jesus name amen praise god thank you holy spirit we give you praise you know our team scripture is in the book of acts acts chapter 4 and verse 29 i'll read it again it says and now lord behold they are threatening. Now take note, first of all, that these, these men were threatened. They were threatened not to preach the gospel. They were threatened not to speak in the name of Jesus again. Now that's what they have been commanded to do. Please, I want you to understand what I'm going to share with us today. It says, and now, Lord, behold, they are threatening and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. How many things have tried to stop you from speaking? Now, when we say speaking, not just speaking alone, exercising God's word. I was sharing last week during our fellowship. And I said, God's children are not disobedient people. We are actually obedient people. When you see us act in seemingly disobedience, is because we are already obeying someone and then the lesser thing or the lesser being is trying to make us disobey the one who we actually are obeying. So it now looks like we are rebellious to those people. But the truth is we are not. We are only sticking to the one who we obey. And because we believe he has a higher authority. Now you see these folks, they were threatened by the, the authority that be then. Uh, you know, Paul had thought that we should respect the authorities, you see. But then they were being told by the authorities that they should not do what the real authority has commanded them to do. And they went before him and they said, Lord, we are not going to stop or we're not going to disobey you because we have received words from you that we should do this okay and these people are saying we should stop but we are not going to stop so this is what we need from you grant unto your servants that with all boldness we will speak your word not as we will obey you they had the heart of obedience not the heart of giving up there are times you have been threatened and then you suddenly say, well, I have to, we have to be careful, I have to give up, I have to let this thing go. When you live your life that way, 
Now, remember, and this is a point I need you to understand because I, I, I have to stress it. Remember, it's not about, because a lot of times as you see believers take actions like this and they suffer for it. They suffer for it, not because God wanted them to suffer. Many believers that have suffered, they suffer because of their ignorance. Many times the things we call persecution are really not persecution. They are the suffering for ignorance. Okay? Yes, they are. You see, there are things you grow. The more you grow, the more you learn. The more you grow, the more you question the things you have held there to or things you have believed in the past. Because you need to keep examining to be sure that what you are holding on to is truth and it has the ability to save you. There is no point, please hear what I'm about to say to you. There is no point believing in a God who you don't trust his ability to save you in time of crisis. Something is wrong with that. You can't believe in a God who you believe will save you. Yet, you know, sometimes we just give excuses. We tend to even give God, give excuses for God. He didn't demand one. Praise God. He didn't demand one. We, we see, as God's children, we must get to that point where we just simply take it. What is good is good. What is bad is bad. For example, you can never get me to accept that it was the will of God for the apostles of old to be martyred and killed the way they were killed. You can never get me to accept that that's the will of God. It's in no way good. But they died like that. Yes, I know. So why would God allow them to die? Like, not because God allowed them to die like that. They died because of most likely their own overzealousness or ignorance. I see because we have this mentality that they are the first apostles. So they must have been very perfect. Not so. I've learned that many, I mean long ago that it's not that way. They did the work they did then with the level of understanding that they had then. Now also there are things they may have said then that even them did not understand to work in it. But if we still have the attitude they had then, now, and we have not grown to the place of understanding, something is wrong. If we cannot analyze what they did or went through with the knowledge we have received today and begin to make adjustment, then we are not growing. The church is marching on, but then where is the movement? The movement is not the increase of our number. The movement is not an increase of our facilities. No, the movement is in the level of our understanding that aids the quality of life that we live as individuals. We can't say we are making progress because our church built a bigger church. No, sir. We can only say we are making progress when our individual lives begin to be affected by the message that we believe. That's what John said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be here, even as your soul prospers. Now, because the prosperity begins in your soul. So, if your soul is prospering, then you begin to prosper financially, you begin to prosper health-wise, then you're fine, you're good. But if your soul is not prospering and then you go, you, you surely end up where you don't want to be. Because that your prosperity is not genuine in any way. It's not. It's like you find a beggar, okay? Maybe God has blessed you so much. And then you find a beggar. He's begging and begging and begging and begging. He says, so what do you want to do with Ah, if I can just get 10 million naira right now, my life will change. The truth is you may put that 10 million naira in his hands and he will only enjoy for you. He will waste it actually. He will waste it on meaningless things. And still end up broke. Why? His mindset could not carry that kind of capacity. 
And this has happened to a lot of people. So even as God's children, if we don't increase our mindset, we can't, we can't, there is no way we can even try that. We can't be reasoning the same way Paul, Peter, James, John were reasoning. We can't. There are advancements that have, we have made today. And God recognizes those advancements. But when we don't trust the leading of the Spirit of God in our lives today, then we are trapped in their old methods. We are trapped in their old understanding. So however they all began to die one after the other, being martyrs or being slaughtered, being, being killed, the, the, some, some gruesome death. Meanwhile, Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. That death doesn't look like the kind of thing Jesus would represent. Yeah, but Jesus died, they dealt with him, he did it because of our sins. And if he really paid the price for sin, then why are you paying also? What is the reason for your own suffering? I understand when we suffer, and I don't really call that suffering, okay? Because now, because on a normal day, maybe a lady, if you need money, you know one or two people you will call and it comes at a cost, you know that. So now you're born again and you love God, you need money. And then you're being tempted between calling those people and not calling them. So you now choose not to call them. Now, because you chose not to call them, you might face that temporary period in your life where things will not be working. Yes, you will face that. Now, when you're facing that, what's going through your mind? Are you thinking, hmm, I'm suffering, no? Because I, I, this is Jesus, I believe. If not that I have believed in Jesus, what I would have done? No, no, that's the mistake you're making. You call, because you have not learned how to prosper, how to make it in Christ Jesus. And so because you don't know, you just still take the old. And you're now tempted whether you should go that way or not. Now, actually, you are suffering. That period, you say, I will not do it. You will suffer for a while. You will suffer lack for a while. You will suffer lack for a while. But then in that process where you are suffering, it's not just to cross your leg and be waiting for God to do something. Find out how this thing works. And leave it. Thank you, Jesus. So it says, And now, Lord, behold, I dare threat me, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. With all boldness. There is the boldness you require, or rather, you require boldness to stand in the place of truth. Remember I talked about Esther before. Daniel is one person to talk about. Now, Daniel stood his ground when the king wanted to kill all of them. He stood his ground and he said, you know what, go tell the king to give me just one day. I'll bring his answer to you. And with that boldness, he went before the Lord and said, Lord, I need this answer tonight. And the Lord gave him. Boldness. Boldness. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood against King Nebuchadnezzar's demon, the idol that he created. They stood against it. That's boldness. They did it because they knew the Lord. They didn't just do it. Listen, if they had just done anything, if they had done, behaved anyhow, they would have died. 
But because they were in obedience to the Lord who had commanded them that you shall not bow down to any graven image. God was explicit on that. Now here they are finding themselves in that kind of situation. And the king said, everybody must bow. But they said, no, because we have received a command from the Lord never to bow down to any graven image. And they stood their ground and you know the story. It landed them in victory. Not only victory, the kind of victory that every child of God wants to see in his life. The king made a decree because of their faithfulness and boldness towards God that nobody in this whole realm should worship any other God or pray to any other God except for the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see the end result? By their actions and boldness, they change the laws of the land and they change it to meet God's criteria. Thank you, Holy Spirit. With all boldness, grant unto your servants that with all boldness we may preach, we may speak your word. We will not be silent. Don't let anything silence your testimony. Don't let anything silence your voice. That's why you need boldness. And this boldness comes in the place of prayer. You pray and pray until the Spirit of God begins to be stirred up in your heart. You pray and pray until you begin to feel that stirring in your heart. And as you begin to feel that stirring, what's happening? Boldness is coming on you. Boldness is, is, is being strong within you. Boldness. Now you step out with that boldness and begin to correct things that needs to be corrected. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Basia Akia Namanda. Thank you, Jesus. We, 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 we must walk in this boldness. And you see, yeah. a loss is in my spirit to share with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. With all boldness, grant unto your servants that with all boldness, all boldness, not some boldness, all that with all boldness we may speak your word. That's exactly what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego asked the Lord for. Give us boldness to stand against this whole society. Because every other person in that region, in that realm, bowed. Ah, my heart is indicting a good man. Are you going to bow also? Are you going to be bold and stand for the Lord? Are you going to stand for the Lord? Wherever you, it might be in your office, it might be in public. Stand for the Lord. Stand for the Lord. Stand for the Lord. Stand. That's how our societies will change. It will not change if we go around begging people or preaching to people, give your life to Christ. Give your... A lot of people have given their lives to Christ as seems they've gone to collect it back. Thank you, Lord. I pray right now for every skill that have blinded your eyes so far. I command that scale broken right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is broken. It is broken. Your eyes are open to see every pattern and things the Lord has released for you. And you will find the strength in you to rise and walk in them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. My time is up. God bless you. Bye.